Hey everybody, Catherine here. It might be pretty obvious that I am not sitting in my travel trailer currently. I was up at a beautiful camp in the forests of the Eastern Sierra Nevada mountains of California. It was fantastic. I was having a wonderful time. However, a storm was on the way. It was the tropical storm Hillary, which was once a hurricane <laughs> in the uh, Pacific that eventually hit landfall in Mexico and started making its way up through basically central California and was going to come right through the area and the path that uh, we were in. So I had to go ahead and pack up camp and head down to hunker down with family in a home where it was safe and sound. I didn't really feel comfortable staying in the trailer because the winds were supposed to be really intense, which didn't really materialize where I am. However, the winds were predicted to be very intense, up to 60 mile per hour gusts tons of rain which that did materialize we had it rained all day yesterday so the hurricane has now passed we are on the other side of it it just uh, pretty much ended late late or i guess i should say early early this morning and now the sun is shining it's made its way through there was a little bit of damage in the area that i'm in there was some flooding uh, in the streets, lots of debris and mud, things like that, but it wasn't that bad. It did hit some areas worse, like the Palm Springs area. However, we got pretty lucky here, so I don't think there was any loss of life. They did a very good job of warning everyone, so I had time to get to someplace safe and hunger down, as well as I believe a lot of other people did the same. But that inspired this week's video because I was uprooted. <laughs> it made me think about some of the things that suck about living on the road full time. If you're new to the channel, again, my name is Catherine. This is into my fifth year of living on the road full time. I first lived in a truck camper and then in 2022, I moved into a 21 foot travel trailer. So yeah, I've been on the road for quite a while. It isn't always sunshine and rainbows and peaches and cream out here. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the downsides of living on the road full time. I tend to show you all the beauty and keep it very upbeat and positive on this channel, which I will always do. However, I'm going to keep it real today because I had this event that affected me just now and talk about some of the things that suck about living on the road full time. And uh, yeah, there are some. So today we'll talk about six things that suck about living on the road full time. These are really in no particular order, but I'm going to save one that's very current for last. <laughs> But the first one that I'm gonna talk about, number six, is breaking down. Uh, that has happened to me several times while living on the road. I drive an old Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. It's a 2002, it's a Duramax diesel, and it is a workhorse. I see a ton of my trucks still on the road. It has almost 300,000 miles on it now, currently. So, I do love my truck. It's a beast. It has no issues pulling my trailer. It had my truck camper on it for years. However, I have broken down in it several times. Unfortunately, when you're living on the road and you break down, you can break down anywhere. It could be in a very rural area. That has happened to me before. Uh, you don't have a reliable mechanic that's just down the road that you can go to. You have to or you're at the mercy of whomever you can get towed to. You don't know whether they're trustworthy or not. You just kind of have to hope for the best and hope that they're really gonna take care of you and get you back on the road. I uh, had to have the truck towed one time with the camper on top. And luckily I was towed to a small town in California where they squeezed me in. I had to sit there all day, but they got my problem fixed and got me back on the road the same day. I wasn't so lucky another time when it broke down and uh, I had to end up staying in a Motel 6 for a week that cost me 
quite a bit of money and it still was not fixed. I wound up having to drive to a mechanic that I trusted in Southern California, which was hundreds of miles away. And he assured me if I didn't go over the speed limit that I would make it there safely, but it was a white knuckle ride and yeah, it's just never fun. Never fun breaking down when you're in your hometown, if you live in a sticks and bricks place, but definitely not when you're on the road because you never know where you're gonna end up and who's gonna end up working on your vehicle. Knock on wood, the old Chevy is running pretty good currently. Hopefully she continues to do that. I take really good care of her. I make sure to get all the regular maintenance done, oil changes, filter changes, all that kind of stuff. So let's hope my baby continues to do good for me. Currently the AC in my truck is not working, however, and I put in a lot of money to have it fixed. It worked for less than a month and is no longer working. And the state that I had it fixed in is far away from where I am now. So getting it repaired under warranty might be kind of complicated. <laughs> so I'm having to plan my time or my travel time around the cooler times of day, like the early morning or late evening. And yeah, that, that kind of sucks too. <laughs> A quick word about the sponsor of today's video, AG1. Even though I packed up quickly and abruptly to get down here and hunker down with family from the storm, AG1 makes it easy for me to maintain my daily healthy habit. AG1 makes it super easy and convenient with these awesome little travel packs that I can just throw in my bag and that way I'm not missing out on my 75 vitamins and minerals per day, my prebiotics, probiotics, everything I need for gut health, immunity, energy, it's all right here. AG1 promotes gut health with prebiotics, probiotics, and natural occurring enzymes that bolster digestion and nutrient absorption. It also supports immunity, your daily dose of vitamin C, zinc, healing mushrooms, and more. I don't know about you, but for me, less is more. And I don't need to worry about grabbing multiple bottles of supplements and vitamins when everything I need is in one scoop of AG1 daily. AG1 is so much more than just greens. One daily serving delivers a comprehensive blend of core health products working together to fill nutrient gaps and deliver the foundation for better health. Have I mentioned that it tastes good too? Build a healthy daily habit in one minute per day. If you haven't tried AG1 yet, I highly recommend it. I wouldn't talk about it unless I did. I've been taking it now for almost two years. And if you click that link below now, you will get a year supply of vitamin D and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. Thank you once again to AG1 for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our chat. Number five on my list is when things go wrong with my actual home, which was initially my truck camper and now my travel trailer. I've had to take my travel trailer in already for various repairs, even though they're warranty repairs. Sometimes these facilities are booked out weeks in advance. So I can't just leave my trailer there, it's my home for weeks. <laughs> I was lucky enough on the last repair, it was the water heater that broke that I did let them know that I live in it full time and they were very nice enough to make sure that they were gonna have it repaired same day and they did do that. However, now my water heater is not working once again. I've just been living with it for now because I can't give up my home for weeks, uh, but maybe now that I'm closer to family, I can work something out to where I stay with family while it's being repaired or camp out of the back of my truck. If I'm someplace where the temperatures are a little bit cooler, We'll see if we can figure that out, but that's not a very critical problem. I can always take a cold shower if I need to, but yeah, it's a problem. So when things go wrong with your home, what do you do? It's something that we have to think about when we live on the road full time and it's something that can suck. You might have to try to find family or friends that you can stay with or pay for lodging once again if you need repairs on your home. So yeah, it's kind of a bummer. My situation now, I do like the fact that I have a truck and a travel trailer so 
that I can unhitch. I can technically leave my home someplace if I have to and hopefully find somebody to stay with or I can camp out of my truck. Uh, I do have options, although it is not an ideal situation. And uh, yeah, it's one of those things that's not so much fun when you're living on the road full time. The number four thing that can be a little rough about living on the road full time is figuring out where you're going to go next. It can be very freeing not being stuck in one place and it is very freeing and it's one of the most wonderful things about living on the road full time. However, it is also one of the tough things because you are constantly trying to plan where you're going next. If you're like me, I don't plan too far in advance. Uh, I just kind of wing it most of the time. So it can be stressful at times trying to decide where to go. You have to figure out where you can camp. Where is the weather going to be good? Where are there things to do in that area? And there are so many places to visit and to go to. However, it's not always easy making that decision. And then sometimes you get some place that you really like and you're really enjoying and you can only stay there for so long. Usually for boondocking type situations, you're only allowed to stay in any individual place about 14 days approximately. And then you have to pick up and move. That can be exhausting at times. And even just the whole thought process of where you're going to go next can get exhausting. It's very exciting when you first start out, but after almost, you know, going on five years now, it can be tiring. Obviously I'm counting backwards from number six to number one. Number three on my list is being on your own. I am a single woman traveling alone most of the time. Occasionally I'll have friends join me on the road, but for the majority of time I'm by myself. So all the decisions that need to be made have to be made by me. I don't have someone who I can run it by. I don't have someone that can offer their input. And when things happen like the truck breaking down or needing repairs on the trailer or making a decision on where to go next, it all falls on me. On one hand, it's very freeing not to have to run anything by anyone else. But on the other hand, sometimes you don't want to make those decisions. You just want someone else's input and someone to help you out a little bit. At least I do. I can only speak for myself in this situation. If you're out there by yourself, I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments and see what you think about this particular topic. Luckily for me, I am pretty independent and I've lived on my own for a very long time. And it definitely is a character building process and it just makes you stronger. So it's not all bad when everything does fall on you. It definitely helps you grow. <laughs> And that kind of leads into the number two thing that sucks about being on the road full time, and that is missing family and friends. <sighs> That's a tough one for me because I've always been super, super close to my family. We've always lived in very close proximity to one another. My siblings and I usually always live fairly close together. Uh, Maybe one or two of us has lived in another state, but we always have kept in close touch and we relied on one another a lot growing up and we're the best of friends with each other. So being away from my family is, is very difficult and my friends. It's not as though when you're out there, you can just call up a friend and say, hey, let's meet for lunch. You know, they are probably thousands of miles away from you at the time. I have missed birthdays, I've missed Mother's Days, Father's Days, holidays, uh, so that can be tough for me. When I first hit the road full time, it was all so new and exciting and trying to figure things out and you know where to go next, what to do next, it was, it was all so much, <laughs> so much sensory overload that I didn't think as much about missing family and friends. However, this far into the journey, I definitely do miss them. So I do make sure that I make time to get home whenever possible and uh, not be away for far, far too long. So that's why I wound up here, back in California here recently, because I did want to see my family and friends. I was missing them. And the good thing about it is I can just pick up and come home, <laughs> come back to my home state and see everybody 
whenever I'd like. But, it, you know, it does cost a lot of money and fuel and whatnot. So you have to kind of plan it carefully and uh, be smart about it. But, you know, your mental well-being is also important. So if it's time to go home and time to surround yourself with the love of loved ones, then that's what you should do. I have had people come visit me on the road, but that doesn't happen very often. It's much more difficult than you might imagine for me to get somebody to come out and hang out with me on the road for a while. Most of the people that I know, my family and friends, work more conventional type jobs, and it's just not that easy for them to get away. They don't have the freedom that I have. So it doesn't happen very often. So you do have to just kind of get used to being on your own. I have made a concerted effort though to try to meet up with people. Uh, I had a friend traveling with me uh, for pretty much the entire month of July so of this year. So that was really nice. And you can make sure that you do associate and socialize with people more often if you do make a concerted effort to do so. It is definitely different though than if you live in a stationary place where you have community around you. You just have kind of have to have a strong fortitude and be able to be alone, <laughs> be able to enjoy your own company. And for the most part, I am that way. So I think that's probably kind of a necessary attribute if you live this lifestyle. And now drum roll please, that brings us to the number one thing on my list that sucks about being on the road full time. And it is timely because we have this storm that just came through and it's what inspired this video. It is dealing with weather situations. Not only weather situations, but fire, smoke, all the different natural disasters elements that can affect your life on the road and all of those things have affected mine. That is why I'm currently here in this home and not in my trailer in a beautiful campsite somewhere. As a matter of fact, Highway 395, which is the highway that takes me up into the Sierra Nevada is closed currently because of all the flooding that and the damage that was done on that road. So I can't even go up to the mountains today if I wanted to. So I am essentially stuck here until they open up the roads again. Yeah, it is. Uh, it can be quite a hassle at times. I've had to move locations due to uh, wildfire smoke. I have had to leave because this summer has been an interesting one with heat. It has been super, super hot in most locations. There's only been very few locations that I have found in the mountains that have uh, very temperate temperatures and mild temperatures. Uh, even in some of the mountain locations that I've seen, it's been hot. So there hasn't been as far as staying comfortable in the elements, a lot of choices of places to go over this past summer. As you might remember last winter, I spent winter in a place that it was actually winter. I wanted to try it out because I had never done it since I'd been on the road. So I was in Utah uh, for the entire winter. I stayed where it just dumped snow and it was the most brutal winter that Utah has seen in years, as well as many places in the West. And uh, it was quite interesting. Although I would not take back that experience, I probably would not do it again. So yeah, just trying to chase good weather can be very tough at times. Every winter, it is a struggle to find a place to go because there aren't many places that have mild temperatures. and. Some of the places that have mild temperatures are not necessarily places I wanna spend an entire winter. Winter is definitely a tough time to live in a mobile vehicle. Even if it is a four season vehicle, a lot of times it's just not the type of insulation and warmth that you would have in a normal sticks and bricks home. Not only that, you're traveling sometimes on icy treacherous roads and you have your home with you, everything that you own in your life is with you. So it's definitely a struggle. I always very much look forward to the springtime and summertime and even 
early fall, but winter is definitely tough. In the mountains though, sometimes you can experience winter-like weather even in the summer. I was in Canada, the Canadian Rockies, just this summer, and it snowed, dumped snow in Jasper. And uh, I was, we were pretty much stuck. And unfortunately, because it was cloudy for days and days, my solar was not being recharged. So I wasn't able to use my computer to edit videos. It kind of stopped me down from work for a while. Yeah. It, it can be interesting. In the summer, obviously the temperatures can be very hot and this summer has been one of the hotter ones out west. I don't have AC in my truck currently. I do, however, have AC in the travel trailer and I can run it off of solar. So I can't do it continuously or constantly, but usually for several hours a day, as long as I have full sun, I can run my AC and then let it recharge the next morning until it gets real warm again and turn it on again. That's not ideal though. I would prefer just to be in places where I don't have to kick on the AC. And I have found a couple of those places this summer. One of them was the Eastern Sierra that I just had to leave. And the other was in the Cook City, Montana area. And then even up in Canada, I was not, uh, it was not hot, so hot that I would have to use the AC. So I've been pretty lucky just to kind of avoid the super hot areas this summer. And luckily so far this year, I have not had to dodge wildfire smoke. I know currently there are many wildfires uh, raging up in the Washington state area, which is affecting lots of the surrounding states. Um, it, hasn't made its way down here to the Sierra. So I'm hoping that it continues to stay away. I will be leaving the state for a trip uh, shortly for another awesome backpacking adventure. And hopefully <laughs> none of these weather conditions or smoke or fires is going to affect that. Oh gosh. Yeah. So it's a constant battle battling the elements when you live on the road full time. But the good news is, is if one place is terrible or you're experiencing a bad situation in a certain area, you can pick up and leave. And I have done that many times. It's not always convenient. It's not always what you want to do, but you do have the ability to do that. So that is my list of the six things that suck about living on the road full time. It might not jibe with everybody else's list, but I'm sure everybody that lives this lifestyle has their own list of things that suck. It is a wonderful lifestyle as well. As you guys know, I wouldn't be out here doing it for all this time if there weren't many great things that outweigh the negative things. And I hope that this didn't come off as a complaining fest, but I did want to keep it real and especially during this timely situation where I've been basically uprooted <laughs> because of weather. So I hope you enjoyed hearing it. I hope that some of you found it interesting. Maybe some of you that are considering living this lifestyle that you know, there are some negative things. And again, it's not always sunshine and rainbows out here, but it is a very interesting, very adventurous, very exciting lifestyle. Even if you give it a try for just a while, if you're thinking about it, as always, I thank you all for joining me. Hopefully I'll be at a more exciting locale the next time you see me. And I always appreciate your support. Thank you so much. And I will see you on the next one. See you soon. Bye-bye.